I think a part of the chaos that we're going through as a culture is because we don't consider our afterlife. We've been told that maybe there is no afterlife and that it's just a bag of bone and dust and you're going to die and you're just going to go to the ground and nothing's going to happen. But that can't be true. It absolutely can't be true because there's an energy that, that, that keeps us sustained. We have a soul and a soul can't die. A soul is consciousness. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I was a part of your King Transformation program last year. I experienced many humbling moments around the 11th week of the program. I almost passed away and ended up being hospitalized for 10 days with sepsis. The diagnosis was septic shock and meningitis, and I'm still recovering from this event. Being a very active person like yourself, this has been mind altering in a way that's hard to describe. I feel afraid to leave my house. I'm exhausted doing the most minuscule tasks. I don't know where to go from here. My wife and kids depend on me to be their leader. I feel like I've become a burden to them. Part of me says, suck it up and go back to work and push through this. The doctor says I may never recover from this, which has casted a lot of doubt on my mind. The other part of me says, if I go hard like I used to, I am going to end up back in the hospital or worse, lose my life and really fuck my family over. Sorry, man, this is a lot, and there really isn't a direct question. I just need some advice. If you have some time, please let me know what you think. So, man, first thing I would do is just extend some empathy to you. I mean, that's a tough situation to be in, my bro, where the load is on your shoulders and you stumble, right? You got sick. What can you do? What can you do? You get sick. Everybody gets sick. Whatever happened, happened, right? It may not be your, it might not be your fault, but it's your opportunity, right? And that may sound strange, but every time there's a crisis, there's an opportunity. Every time that there is a question, there's an answer, right? And that's where you are right now. Inherent in the question is the answer. Inherent in the in the crisis is the opportunity. They, 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 they're two sides of the same coin. It might not seem that way, but it's important to look at things that way. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to get a little philosophical for a moment and then I'll get very pragmatic. Uh, philosophically, right? Just from, from a high perspective, this was an event that woke you up to something, some, some part of yourself that needed some recognition. It was a pattern interrupt and a pattern interrupt is an opportunity to shift, to do things differently, to think differently, to have an awakening, right? A rebirth, if you will. You came close to death. I think that men wake up. Men become our best selves when we live close to death, when we have mortality on our mind. We live in a world where mortality has been carted off, right? We don't bury our dead in our yards anymore. When people are sick, we send them to the hospital. They don't have hospice in our homes. We don't even kill our own animals. We go to the supermarket and we buy meat. We do not associate it with, do associate with mortality, with death at all. And you cannot live. We do not live if we do not keep front and center our death. This is why I'm so attracted to Catholicism because they say that it's hard to live as a Catholic, but easy to die as one because we're constantly living our life in the, in, in the mindset that I'm going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. And you came very close to dying. And when you come that close to dying, you start thinking about what's next, right? First of all, what did I leave behind and where am I going? And I think it's important for men to think about the afterlife. I think thinking about the afterlife sets our current life in order. I think a part of the chaos that we're going through as a culture is because we don't consider our afterlife. We've been told that maybe there is no afterlife and that it's just a bag of bone and dust and you're going to die and you're just going to go to the ground and nothing's going to happen. But that can't be true. It absolutely can't be true because there's an energy that, that, that keeps us sustained. We have a soul and a soul can't die. A soul is consciousness. All of your thoughts, all of your feelings, all of your guilts, all of your angers, all of your sadnesses, all of your sins, and all of your grace follow you to the grave. They don't go anywhere. Those experiences do not disappear. Your body disappears, but everything that you are from the inside continues to live on. 
right? And are you going to live, is your soul going to live in a state of bliss, a state of nirvana, a state of heaven, right? Because you have no guilt, you have no shame, you have no regrets in your life. Or will you be tormented for eternity because you were lamenting, because you were whining, because you were sad for yourself? And listen, you've gone through tougher shit than I, I never had 10 days of sepsis and shock and meningitis and ended up in the, in the hospital. So, you know, I, 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 I step back and I respect and I have empathy for you with regard to that. But at the same time, I got to drop some hard shit right now. When you say a part of me feels like I got to suck it up and go back to work, but you're not sure you might end up in the same place where you were and you've really fucked your family over. Uh, it's sort of a dilemma, but it's not if you look at it this way. If what I just said rings true to you, that you want to die righteously, it's better to die righteously than to live licentiously. If you're living right, if you're in a state of grace, you've made right with the Lord, made right with your father, made right with your wife, you're doing the right thing and you're living on the righteous path, then death should be of no concern to you. You should have no worries about death. You could just open yourself up to the prospect of death with wide open arms. This is what the men of the past did that were confronting with their, their uh, mortality on a daily basis. Men used to confront their mortality on a daily basis because we've become so thick, fat, and used to living lavishly, we forget. But one of the things that men would do, and I remember in, in several instances seeing pieces of artwork and such where brilliant men would carry with them or they would have on their desk a skull a human skull or the rendition of a human skull. Why? Because they would remember in every single moment, memento mori, I could die in this moment. And when you ponder that question, the next thing should be, how am I living this life and do I deserve heaven in the next, right? Live your life right now. This is my, it's just my opinion. Like I said, you know, a lot of times I'm saying stuff, I'm not in your shoes, I'm just giving you my opinion, what I think. Live your life like a saint right now. You have an opportunity, right, to right your wrongs. Forgive the people you need to forgive. Live lightly, right? Unburden yourself. You might die, right? You legitimately might die, but if you unburden yourself, you could die lightly. I want to die lightly. I want to die with just a little... Just a little smile on my face. Do you know that state of your emotion, your, the state of your thoughts and your emotions at the time of your death imprint themselves for, your, for eternity? When I know that day is coming, or if I see it coming, I'm going to do my best to ask for forgiveness and put a smile on my face. Forgive me, Lord, for all my fuck-ups. I can't wait to come see you, right? That's, just, that's things we really should think about. Men don't think about these things any, anymore. That's why men are weak. Men need to think about their death. Think about their mortality. Many, much, much, much more. You've been given a gift to think about your mortality. That's number one. When you say, if you go back to work, this is a double-edged sword, right? And I'm, and I'm going to give you my opinion on it. You say you go back to work and you may end up worse than before and really fuck your family over. My opinion is do what you can right now with what you have. And that means if you can go back to work, go back to work. What are you going to do at home? What are you going to do loafing around, feeling bad for yourself, preserving yourself? For what? For a miserable life? You say you're becoming a burden to them. Maybe you are. Maybe you'd be better off dead and they get your insurance money than you loafing around and being a loser, dragging them down with your bad attitude. Right? Right? I'm not knocking you, but I'm saying this is, this is a way of thinking. Go back to work. Go back to some kind of work. Maybe don't go back to the work that you were doing before, but go back to some kind of work. You need to do something that makes you useful. That way you can get your mind off of the bullshit and you can focus on chopping wood, carrying water, chopping wood, carrying water, chopping wood, carrying water, die. That's what life really is. Life is not, you know... The, We've been fed this lie that life is all about happiness and comfort, but it's not. Life is about holiness and, and action. It's about work 
and sanctity. Sanctify your soul, work your body, right? Work your body, save your soul. Work your body, save your soul. If you work your body, save your soul, it's like chopping wood and carrying water, right? Chopping wood is the body, water is the soul. You gotta work, you gotta work. I, I mean, even if it's just around your house, right? Like, look at your house. Maybe you can plant a garden. Maybe you could plant some trees. Maybe you can fix the fence. Maybe you can get some pets. Maybe you can do things to make life more livable in the little kingdom that you have, which is your home, which is your family. Do something. Get up and do something. Because when death comes knocking at your door, you don't want to be idle. You don't want to be caught in your thoughts. You don't want to be caught in your feelings. You want to be caught working. I want to die working. There was this guy, Jesse Morunde, who was a pro strongman back in the day, and I was a big fan of him when I first started strongman. You know, he, he was a young man. He was probably maybe around 26 years old when he died. You know how he died? He died during his workout. He was working out one day, doing a basic workout. He laid down after his workout. Just, you know, I do it sometimes too. He just laid down on the floor like, oh, man, that was a tough workout. He laid down on the floor. He didn't wake up. I want to die like that. I want to die like that. I want to die doing stuff. Die doing stuff. Don't stop doing stuff. Go back to work. And if you're worried about your family, I will say don't. Because the imprint of your, the imprint of your actions, the imprint of your character will press themselves on, their, on, 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 their, on them when you die. Do you want when you die for your wife and daughter to think, oh, my poor dad, my sad dad, he died while he was depressed? Or do you want them to say, I'm really, I admire my father, I'm proud of my father. My father was a strong man and he worked until the last day of his death. He worked until the day he died. Which is a better legacy? Which is a better story for them to say about you? Oh, my poor dad and have sympathy and sadness about you? Or... Wow, I'm proud. I admire my dad. I'm so proud of my dad. That means a lot for a man. A lot of people trying to denigrate these things and, and because they're, they're trapped in sensuality and they're more focused on material wealth and comfort. But men are spiritual. Men are by nature spiritual. Men are more spiritual than women, right? Women are more physical. Men are more spiritual in that way, right? Material, mama, matriarchy, paternity, father, pattern, ar archetype, spirit. So we are of a higher, we're, we have a higher way of things, and that's why legacy means more for, than us. Women don't talk about legacy unless she is a feminist, right? And they got it all backwards and wrong anyway, because nobody, there's no feminine le legacy. Nobody remembers these women. But men, everybody remembers. Everybody remembers what their father did, what their grandfather did, whether it was good or whether it's bad. You hear very few people complaining about mommy. Spirit, spirit, we're the spirit. Men are the spirit. In what spirit will you die? Will you die in a spirit of fear and trembling or will you die in a spirit of courage and strength? I think that's where you need to direct your mind, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.